for 515 Fantasy Football. I know football. Are you ready for some football? Domination on Sundays begins with listening to these guys on Thursdays. You ready for this? Over 40 years of fantasy football experience between them. Yeah! One is a proud veteran of the United States Marine Corps, husband and father, entering his 18th year of fantasy competition. Brian Eikenberry. The other, also a proud husband and father, is one of the winningest fantasy minds in the state. Celebrating 24 years of excellence. Andy Hall. Let's get the game on! It's showtime. The 515 Fantasy Football Show with your hosts, Andy Hall and Brian Eikenberry. Only two episodes of preseason fantasy football talk remaining. The 2016-2017 regular season just around the corner. But first, some final preparation as you gear up for your draft. Andy Hall joined, as always, by Brian Eikenberry, a man that is always prepared, no matter the situation. Ain't that right, friend? That's right. doesn't matter if it's uh, flooding waters, earthquakes, uh, mosh pits, or a fantasy draft. I am prepared. And we uh, saw that in action this past weekend as Brian and I took a road trip up to Minneapolis to see the Mighty Mighty Metallica play live. That's right. Uh, Love it. It, It's awesome. It's an amazing show. And that that new stadium, God, if the Vikings didn't play there, it would have been pretty special. Yeah, I heard it all. I've heard, you know, (laughs) boy, it's a real shame they got to open up such a pretty stadium and no trophies to put in it, you know. Hardy har har. They had Metallica in it, so that's all that matters. That's I'll true. trade it for a trophy any day. Yeah, I made a joke on Facebook <laughs> Live. Some Packer fan was trying to give me some jazz about that. And I said, oh, yeah. I said, yeah, we got Metallica here. You couldn't even get a tribute band at Lambo. <laughs> a number of ways we can be found on a week-to-week basis. iTunes, Stitcher, on the air at 1350 AM ESPN in Des Moines. We are online at ESPNDesMoines.com under local shows. There you will find each of our episodes available for your listen and pleasure or download. Also blog entries, which is something new, including positional rankings, which I've been updating on a weekly basis. And once the season gets started, we'll have some exclusive content there as well at ESPNDesMoines.com. We invite you to like our Facebook page, 515 Fantasy Football, and follow us on Twitter at 515 Fantasy. We love to interact with our listeners. Remember my guarantee. Brian, you remember it, don't you? We will never, ever ignore you. That's right. Never ignore. We'll always respond. Whether it's one of us or both of us, you're going to get some action. Yep. You take some time to tweet us or leave a message on Facebook. We appreciate you investing that time, and we will answer. Lots of ground to cover in the next couple of hours. We'll talk goal line specialists and other flex-worthy considerations you can grab in later rounds of your draft. Brian and I will play over or undervalued and probably argue a bunch Also talk zero running back and some of the other trendy draft strategies we haven't yet covered. And uh, also tell you what we learned from week two of the preseason. But first, how about some headlines of fantasy notes beginning in New England as we seem to be doing every single week. Every single week we're starting here. Lots of trouble brewing. Well, I will say Gronk is back at practice as of Wednesday. Everybody can breathe. Yeah. Patriots running back Deion Lewis, though, to stay on the pup list. He's out indefinitely recovering from knee surgery, so I've seen his ADP go from as high as, like, a third-round pick to, like, undrafted at this point. Yeah, that was – so if you've already drafted at this point and you picked up LeGarrette Blunt, you just yelled jackpot as loud as you can. Perhaps. There's also this guy named James White who's expected to open season as a primary pass-catching back there in Patriots Nation. Yeah, I'm not too uh, concerned about that. I definitely think Blunt's value went way up uh, just because it's the trust factor there. And uh, White was on the depth chart that low for a reason. There have been some rumblings, Brian, that uh, the Patriots might look toward maybe a free agent signing to sort of bolster Oh, that is this backfield. our Ray Rice? Is this our Ray Rice? I, I have to throw it out there because <laughs> I, I want to look like a genius one we of these We talked about this a couple of few weeks ago. I think first week we did this show. I think we this goes back to the first show of the season. Yeah. We'll yep. have to check the tapes, but we did make a prediction that if Ray Rice ever got in, reinstated, it would have to be with New England. Yeah, it was going to be with New England. <laughs> Here we go. Moving on. Bills running back Carlos Williams, he was cut last weekend. Uh, Apparently, he has uh, visited at least one team. The New York Jets uh, showed a little bit of interest, but uh, that's probably all there will be at this point for Carlos. 
Yeah, I was a little shocked to kind of see it, but then once you start to read into it, you kind of see where they're going with it, and um, that's a vote of confidence and a hat tip to McCoy. Redskins running back Matt Jones likely to be held out of this week's preseason game and possibly more than that with a shoulder injury. Not a good time to be getting hurt. The third preseason game typically is like the real dress rehearsal for the season, is it not? Yeah, it's uh, when you really want to see the offenses, you want to see how everybody's clicking because nobody's playing in week four. And uh, Matt Jones is your boy, isn't he? Matt Jones, I cannot stand. (laughs) Although he's, you know, there's a great opportunity there if the guy can just stay healthy. He's facing some defenses. I've seen strength of schedules that suggest that the NFC East has a pretty easy go of it against uh, opposing run defenses. So I, I don't know. I mean, maybe I'll grab him somewhere, but probably not most. I will say this. Coach Jay Gruden, he named undrafted free agent Rob Kelly the next man up. Not seventh round draft pick Keith Marshall. So that's a bit of a a change from what conventional wisdom was just a week ago. Yeah, we'll see what uh, this week's games have in, have in store. You'll get your answer there. Ravens wide receiver Brashad Perryman, he returned to practice this week after missing his entire rookie season with a knee injury. Colts running back Robert Turbin looking like the l- most likely candidate to back up Frank Gore, a.k.a. Old man. Duncan McLeod. <laughs> He's always going to be the Highlander. Yes, he today. is. Because he will, I mean, the guy will play until he's 85 years old. If he can still pass protect at his age, and I saw, a premium. Some, I saw some footage from last week's preseason game, he's out there banging some bodies around, man. Well, hey, that, that's a part of the job, especially even look at the tight end realm, too. It's Pass blocking is very important in this league at this point. It's an extra lineman. And a running back's job is going to require you to do that at some point. Not to mention, you know, they just, Andrew Luck is yeah, making you an also awful just, lot of money. Yeah, a ton. Uh, also, for the Colts, corner Vontae Davis is out indefinitely. He's got some ligament damage in his ankle. Antonio Cromartie has been signed to Indianapolis. Vontae <laughs> Davis is a big, let's, uh, before you start laughing, Vontae Davis is actually a very big loss for this team. And we don't, we don't know how long he'll be out. Well, when I seen that come across, I went, ooh, that sucks. And then I seen Cromartie, I'm like, who? What? Are you kidding me? He's still around? Yeah, I think he was with the Jets up until last year, wasn't he? Yeah, but he's Frank Gore the second, I think. <laughs> Perhaps. Uh, Bengals rookie wide receiver Tyler Boyd uh, is the, quote, clubhouse favorite, unquote, to secure the number two wide receiver position there in Cincinnati. Apparently, the guys are behind him. It remains to be seen whether or not he has surpassed Brandon LaFell. Maybe this weekend's preseason game will shed some more light on that. Yep. Uh, Final decision will be made this weekend, but wow. um, Something to think about if you're thinking about Andy Dalton. Yikes. Well, or, I mean, if you're in a a dynasty league and you have a rookie draft like you and I have. The one in a couple days. Coming up here this (laughs) weekend. Maybe you consider Tyler Boyd a little sooner than I had anticipated. Yeah, maybe. So there you have it. Packer, Packers wide receiver Jordy Nelson uh, returned to practice for the first time since last preseason, so that's good news for Packers fans. Cowboys wide receiver Des Bryant suffered a concussion in practice on Monday. He's in the league's concussion protocol, will not play this weekend. Also in Cowboys notes, running back Lance Dunbar activated off the pup list he is a huge ppr asset for those cowboys saints tight end kobe fleener referred to as a quote work in progress unquote by sean payton not a good sign for kobe fleener whom a lot of people have pegged as sort of a a big breakout this year yeah i did not and i'm glad and then when you hear that it just whoa that's bad news Check this out. So a Denver TV reporter claims Mark Sanchez may be out of the picture completely in that quarterback battle. Trevor Simeon started last week's game. Paxton Lynch, the rookie, he's apparently in the mix as well. Mark Sanchez might be out of a gig. He was the starter two weeks ago. Unquestioned starter two weeks ago. What happened? Too many hot dogs? I don't know. If I'm John Elway, I'm flashing the rings, though. Like, hey, go away. Tapping them on the table. Go away. (laughs) I know what I'm doing here. The same source, by the way, claimed they'd be surprised if running back Ronnie Hillman made this year's roster. Another sort of shocker, if you ask me. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, you look back last year, you, you're licking your chops at all these running backs in the backfield there, and now it's just a bunch of crickets. I had a buddy who drafted Devontae Booker 
a little earlier than his ADP would suggest, and I gave him some crap for it and said, boy, he's got to he's got to surpass Anderson and Hillman before he sniffs the field, and now I'm looking like the guy with egg on my face. So. Yeah, whoops. How's that work? Niners running back Sean Drawn, the favorite to back up Carlos Hyde, according to head coach Chip Kelly there in San Fran. Panthers coaching staff now talking up Devin Funches. We've already heard Cam Newton talking him up. Could Devin Funches be the actual guy you want to own there in carolina we might argue that later on We're gonna. rams are reportedly planning to start case keenum at quarterback in week one so that's noteworthy giants backup running back spot seems to have been earned by andre williams not the rookie paul perkins jets backup quarterback bryce petty making a solid case for a roster spot there in new york and bucks tight end austin safarian jenkins your boy he has reportedly earned his way back into first team reps and that'll do it for headlines stick around coming up here in just a few minutes Going to talk about what we learned from watching week two action of preseason football in the 2016 NFL season. You are listening to the 515 Fantasy Football Show. This is 1350 AM ESPN Radio. You are listening to the 515 Fantasy Football Show on 1350 AM ESPN Radio. Andy Hall sitting across from Brian Eikenberry in my basement. Like champs. This is this is the studio. The Three home, feet apart. The home studio. The home studio. I've had, I've actually had that question. <laughs> Where do you do the show from? Yep. Is it the palatial ESPN studios? Do they fly you out to Bristol to yeah, do your show? Actually, <laughs> it's my basement. It's the basement. Sorry. Way cooler than palatial studios. Yeah, there are good Pokemon here. <laughs> You, according to you, because I have <laughs> no idea what you're talking about when it comes to that. But anywho, uh, reminder real quick that uh, you can catch us on iTunes and Stitcher. A lot of you do do that. But uh, if you ever want to go to ESPNDesMoines.com, that's our uh, online home. And you can also listen to the episode from there. And that is a mobile-friendly website, Brian. Yeah. Hey, so I just want to take an opportunity to say, as you're out there drafting this weekend or next weekend and you're at a live draft and you want to look like you know what you're doing, just a reminder, go to your device, go to our website, 1350 ESPN. It's actually ESPN Des com. Go there, go to the show. All the position rankings are mobile friendly. So you can open multiple tabs in your phone. You can have us in your pocket and you can be sneaky and look like a champ and give no credit to us. Do by, it. By the way, those rankings have just been updated. Just been updated. And so it reflects all of the injury news. Matt Jones, we mentioned a bit ago from Washington, Deion Lewis, that sort of thing. Um, it has been updated, and it'll continue to be updated if anything else happens. Uh, I like to stay on top of that. So ESPNDesMoines.com is where you can find it. What did we learn? Week two of preseason football. Brian, week two isn't typically the most important, but it might be the second most important week of the preseason. I don't think there is a second important week <laughs> of the preseason. I really don't. It's just week three and that's it. Huh? Yeah, I mean, to me, these are really about trimming the trimming the roster down to 53. You're going from 96 to 72 to 53, I think, is what the order is. So for me, it's not much action. It's not much stuff. If you're looking, you're just watching for who's really putting the effort out there, to me anyways. The only reason Brian's saying that is because the Lions lost in week two of the preseason. So mm. we'll begin with Cincinnati 30, Detroit 14. A uh, couple of quick things I noticed for uh, on the Bengals' side. Um, Jeremy Hill, he's looking good. Very limited action, of course, but uh, scored a touchdown, ran with purpose. I think that was something he was missing last year. Uh, could Jeremy Hill be one of those guys that have a nice bounce back here in 2016? Uh, I don't think it's going to be a huge bounce back. As long as Geo's there, it's a 50-50 split. They have well-defined roles, and uh, I don't think one is going to necessarily be significantly greater than the other. We mentioned the talented rookie wide receiver Tyler Boyd. He scored as well in this game. Uh, for, on the Lions side, I'm sure, did you at least watch highlights of this one, Brian? Uh, of course. There they get go. zapped to my phone. So, Jones and Tate. Woo-wee. How about it? We've talked about this a lot. And I would people are sitting there like, what are you talking about? Uh, Matt Stafford running a no huddle. That's what we're talking about. Seven receptions between them over 100 yards. I uh, am going to stick to my guns on this and say that Marvin Jones will end up being the better value for your fantasy squad. But that said, if you draft Golden Tate, you're going to be 
perfectly happy with what you get out of it. Yeah, I definitely think either one are worthy of being picked. Uh, it's just at what round and what value are you getting? Eagles 17, Steelers 0. Uh, four interceptions on the night for poor Landry Jones. Uh, nobody really noteworthy played for the Steelers in this game, at least offensively. We're going to see a bit more of their roster here in week three of the preseason. And uh, for that matter, if we learned virtually nothing on the Pittsburgh side of the ball, we really learned nothing on the Philadelphia side in this game. Yeah, um, it, there's nothing you can say about it because nobody's going to get drafted. So we move on. Green Bay 20, Oakland 12. Eddie Lacy looked good in this one. Nine carries, 45 yards, and a touchdown. The Raiders looked, I guess, very average, if, if there was a word for it. Yeah, I don't. This goes back. I don't put a lot of stuff into the team. I'm looking at individual players, like you said. Some people look like champs. Take note. It's Eddie Lacy. Though. I mean, you know, there's. It's not like there's a ton of depth there in Green Bay at the running back position. They've I'm, got James hey. Starks and then a bunch of other guys. One of which, by the way, graduated from the same high school that I did. Do you have his autograph, John Crockett? Oh, I want to get his autograph. <laughs> But he's a Packer, so on your, I kind of hate him already. On your letter jacket? Oh, don't give me that. It's <laughs> hanging up right over there. I don't doubt it. We are in the basement of my house. There's my letter. Go look. No. Get up. It's Go there. look. It's, it's there. hanging up right there. <laughs> Literally. That's terrible. Go look. That's terrible. It's not signed by John Crockett, though. Uh, moving on. New England 23, Chicago 22. LeGarrette Blunt, goal line touchdown. 11 carries, 69 yards. Again, another case like Lacey where... They're playing these guys. They're giving them plenty of work here in the second week of preseason. Uh, Jeremy Langford on the Bears' side ran pretty well as as well. Eight carries, 55 yards, and a touchdown for him. I think Langford's a guy that there's really no fence with him. You either love him or don't, and you'll either draft him and be happy or you won't. Very true, and I think that really comes into play not so much with a person but the team as a whole. Um, are you thinking about Bears this year or are you not? Most people not. Um, hey, I'm telling you, Langford is on my radar. Is he one of the top guys? No, but you know what? He could be a sleeper. We we bag on the Bears quite a bit, but I'll be honest with you. I, I definitely would take Jeremy Langford in the right spot. I would definitely take Alshon Jeffrey if he fell to me and, and it was a value. Sure. But uh, other than that, probably nothing. <laughs> Atlanta 24, Cleveland 13. So at least Cleveland scored a normal football score in this game. Uh, Devontae Freeman and Mohamed Sanu both shine in this game. Sanu is a, a name to keep your eye on. Speaking of sleepers, everybody's talking Julio Jones there in Atlanta, but uh, the other of the former Bengal receivers, we were just talking about Marvin Jones. Mohamed Sanu is a solid number two there in Atlanta. Yeah, you're taking a little bit of my thunder for later in the show, but uh, Oops. definitely Sanu is somebody you're going to want to keep your eye on because it's not so much about what they did last year. It's about where the position they're in now. RG3, speaking of guys we're going to talk about later, making it look easy, two touchdowns, one to Terrell Pryor, who's looking like the real deal. I don't believe it. Well, it's tough to believe when it's the Cleveland Browns. That's right. They find a way to screw it up. They do. Minnesota 18, Seattle 11. This week, Seattle puts up the baseball score. Nothing to report for Minnesota. Bridgewater didn't even play in this one. Christine Michael on the Seattle side, 10 carries, 55 yards, and starting to move his way up ADP a little bit. I am staying away from the running back situation in Seattle. It's too messy, too murky. I am with you 100% on that, plus their offensive line hasn't been completely fixed yet. Washington 22, Jets 18. We talked about Jones getting hurt. McCoy, sharp, two touchdown passes. I know you're a fan of his. Yeah. We'll see what happens. Um, God, I don't know. It's I just can't. Quarterbacks are tough to judge here, and I just can't get on board with it. <laughs> You're also a fan of Kirk Cousins. Yes, I'm a huge fan of Kirk Cousins. It's going to happen, man. I'm a fan of Bryce Petty if he ever gets the opportunity in New York. He's fighting for number two quarterback duties there. Uh, Bilal Powell again this week. Looked very good. Dallas 41, Miami 14. Dak Prescott. Wins MVP champ of preseason the this year. The guy is just insane. So you wanted to give it to Zach Zenner last year. I'm not sure if he actually won it or not, preseason MVP. But I think Dak Prescott already has it in the bag after two games. Yeah, because like he had like a 153 QBR, and then he had like a one the 158. He had the perfect rating. 
the second week, yeah, sure, it's preseason, but still just godlike numbers in the preseason, I'm telling you. Two touchdown passes, two touchdown runs for Dak. Uh, Alfred Morris looked great in a backup role. That is noteworthy as uh, those Hank of you that are looking at taking Ezekiel Elliott should probably take a look at Alfred Morris a little later down the line. Tannehill to Stills twice for the Miami Dolphins, and that's really all she wrote for Miami headlines. Kenny Stills, former Saint, now catching passes there in Miami. San Diego 19, Arizona 3. The Chargers D looked pretty stout in this one. The run blocking still suspect. Um, so those of you that, like me, who actually think Melvin Gordon can have a, a pretty nice bounce back after a disappointing rookie campaign, uh, you know, they're going to have to rely on that offensive line. Not the greatest. They have some holes to fill. Nothing really noteworthy on the card side of the ball. Carolina 26, Tennessee 16. Cam Newton, two scoring drives, including a long touchdown to Ted Ginn Jr., buddy. Don't forget about that guy. No, I am. I'm done with him. I moved on. That's not smart. Tajay Sharp. What do you know about Tajay Sharp? Nothing. Rookie, wide receiver, Tennessee Titans in a place where there are no wide receivers. Where there are no wide receivers. (laughs) It's a void. Kendall Wright hasn't played yet this preseason. They do have Rashard Matthews, who we'll talk about a little bit later Mm -hmm. on. Dorio Green Beckham is gone. Gone. Who else is there? There's Tajay Sharp. I will sound like a good tight end Delaney Walker option. You never know. I think Delaney's going to have a big year. Again. There's nobody left. That's true. <laughs> uh, Buffalo 21, Giants 0. LaShawn McCoy scored on a nice reception. Nothing really worth mentioning on the Giants side aside from their backup quarterback, Ryan Nassib. Or Nassib. Nassib. He's terrible. Terrible. Yeah. They really need to figure that out because if something happens to Eli, that team is D-E-A-D. Dead. Dead, dead, dead. Oh, that's a Jets chant, isn't it? Yeah. Ooh, that's going to make the Giants fans mad. Moving on. Ravens 19, Colts 18. No Flacco. So didn't really see a whole lot that interested me. Rest of the Baltimore O was kind of vanilla in this one. Luck looking very sharp. Eight of eight on his one drive. It's good. Um, The fact, yeah, stats are stats, whatever. Um, but if you're going eight for eight on your opening drive, done, we're out of here. You don't need much warm-ups anymore. No. Although he will play slightly more in this week. Yeah, they usually go game. a whole quarter. Tampa 27, Jacksonville 21. A slow start for Winston. Uh, Evan scored in this one, though. Bortles, two touchdowns on three drives. Uh, one to Yeldon, one to Hearns. Houston 16, New Orleans 9. Nice touchdown pass from Brock Osweiler to the talented, speedy rookie Will Fuller on the Texans' side of the ball. Very uneventful night for the Saints. And that's really all there is to tell you from week two of the preseason. so exciting. I know. (laughs) It's going to get a little more exciting here. This week will be one that I'm really... But there are things to note. If you listen to it, go back, hit rewind, something. We we dropped some nuggets in there. Speaking of nuggets, we're going to give you our sleepers of the year. Yeah, it's happening. Draft time is coming up very soon, very quickly. So sleepers, you're going to want them. We've got them coming up. We're also going to talk goal line specialists. We've got the pop quiz still to come. Brian and I are going to argue overvalued, undervalued. Lots. That should be a fun little game, exercise, whatever, what have you. I don't like exercise. I don't either, <laughs> come to think of it. Zero running back conversation coming up here in just a bit. 515 Fantasy Football on 1350 ESPN Radio. The 515 Fantasy Football Show. You're hearing it on 1350 AM ESPN Radio in Des Moines or iTunes or Stitcher or via our online stream, I guess you could call it, at ESPNDesMoines.com. Online segments? Yeah, we have lots of places you we can listen. We have lots of stuff out there. Come out to our website. We're really proud of it. We're geeking out over this stuff. We have lots of cool stuff going on. I think it, I love it. Yeah, it's almost passé now to mention the Facebook page. I don't think anybody cares about it. It, it feels like neglected lately. No, there's people out there. <laughs> Come on now, Facebookers. You're sitting there. You're doing your business. You're hiding from the wife and kids in the bathroom. No, oh, okay. You're playing games. When you said doing your business, I wondered what you were talking about. Yeah, swing by the 515 Facebook page. Come on, we're out there. We've got lots of stuff going on. 
If you have a thought, drop us a line. It'll get answered. We may even talk about you. Yep. We uh, actually have dedicated an entire segment of this episode to a listener submission. I'm pretty excited. I like listeners. We're just going to just gonna throw it out there and see what happens. And I like that sort of unscripted and, you know, I don't have all these notes here in front of me with, like, numbers That's what and professionals stuff. do. I, you know, I just like to spitball once in a while because that's what most people do. They just spitball. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Throw it against the wall see if it spaghetti. sticks. Yeah, see if it <laughs> sticks, right? That's right. All right. This segment, Brian, we're going to talk about a, uh, a trendy draft strategy. Something that has gone, become increasingly more trendy over the last couple of years. This year is the first year, if you'll notice, looking at fantasy magazines, online content, basically anywhere you go. If they have a cheat sheet, they're top 200 will probably feature a few uh, wide receivers right at the very top of this year's cheat sheets. It kind of sounds familiar like something we've been doing. I've been doing it for almost 10 years. I've been doing it for about two or three. The zero running back draft strategy. Essentially, this is based on the theory that the running back position is incredibly volatile and top scorers at the position rarely return the value you put into them. For example... Can you tell me how many of Fantasy's top 12 running backs in 2014 were also in that top 12 last year? I'm going to spitball and say four. The answer's two. Wow. Matt Forte, who went from third to ninth, and Lamar Miller, who went from ninth to fifth. Take that. Injuries. It was a big year for injuries last year. Situational changes, workload changes, and a short shelf life in general lead to the idea that since most people would load up on the running back position early and often, mainly because the idea of the workhorse back has sort of gone away, in the NFL, coaches have found that it's much more beneficial to their team if they're handing first and second down, for example, to the old workhorse and third down to a specialist type who's catching passes, that sort of thing. So most people would load up on the running back position early and often. It's a solid strategy to do the opposite. Grab top-notch wide receivers, quarterbacks, and tight ends before drafting runners with perceived upside. Originally, this idea goes back about 10 years or so, was created by a great man named Paul Charchian, one of the godfathers of the industry we all know and love. Not a ton of people have been playing fantasy football as long as I have, but Paul is definitely one of them, and I have always paid close attention to what he has said. This do-the-opposite theory, now called zero running back, began with Paul. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. Zero running back is the new term for this do-the-opposite theory. Here's the deal. Don't even look at the running back position until at least the sixth round. Okay, obviously this strategy takes nerves of steel, and a lot of faith. Let's say we have the third pick in a 12-team half PPR league. Okay, so that third pick, assuming Antonio Brown, Odell Beckham are off the board, who are you picking in this do-the-opposite slash zero running back strategy? Julio. Julio Jones. Perfect first-round pick. Comes back around. According to ADP, I say your second-round pick is going to be somebody like a Keenan Allen. Highly targeted. He was one of the hottest receivers in all of fantasy before yeah. he got hurt last year. Your first two picks are Julio Jones, Keenan Allen, if you're the third pick in a 12-team half PPR. So you're coming back around again, a few more picks. You're picking again. And who's sitting there in the third round? Cam Newton. Here's an opportunity to grab Cam. You have Julio Jones, Keenan Allen, and Cam Newton with your first three picks. I'm doing the opposite of the opposite. So doing the opposite of the opposite <laughs> is when everybody has already gotten on board with this zero running back strategy and all those running backs are still sitting out there for you to take at a value. Yep. At that point, it's okay to do it. So do the opposite of the opposite. But for me personally, so like, let's go through the rest of this. I actually mocked up a 12 round draft. Oh, fantastic. How convenient. Right. And I looked at, I created this according to ADP and players that probably should be there when you're picking at that number three spot in a 12-team league. Again, this is half PPR, as is most stuff. Like, 
my positional rankings. Yes. All based on half PPR. Yes. So we got Cam Newton in that third round. We got to wait for that fourth round pick, come back around, and we grab Eric Decker. Now we have three wide receivers and Cam Newton. Okay. Champing out right now. Fifth pick. Just a few picks later. Who's sitting there? Greg Olson. I can team him up with Cam Newton. I kind of like that idea. Greg Olson, heavily targeted. Yes. We have Julio, Keenan, Cam, Eric Decker, Greg Olson in our first five picks. Now we start looking at running backs. Sixth pick. Sixth round, we take Duke Johnson. Yep. Cleveland I'd, Browns. I'd pull on it. Especially in half PPR. This is a guy who can catch. He could catch 100 passes this year. And probably will. It's like no joke. This guy catches passes. And he can also run. Isaiah Crowell is typically the early down back. But this it could be it could be Duke time. You given the opportunity, he how about this? Duke Johnson could easily be the next Devontae Freeman. Is that preposterous? Yeah, it's uh super talent. Big big goals there, pal. Devontae Freeman was nobody. Before he was given the opportunity, and behind that Atlanta offensive line, which was not one of the best in the league. No, it was not. Devontae Freeman made it happen. Why cannot Duke Johnson make it happen? He's got the same sort of pass-catching prowess. Anyway. We'll see. Round seven, another running back. How about we take Danny Woodhead? Ooh, round seven, nobody else is there. He was a top 10 back last I year. I know he was. I'm just pulling your chain here. I'm trying to play the other side of the radio here. I know. It sounds, sounds good when I fluctuate the voice, though. Jeez. I don't sound like a robot. Mr. Radio over here. Thank God. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I've been doing this a while. Round eight. How about we take Charles Sims? Yep. Another pass catching back who, if given the opportunity, could be huge. And you just got him in the eighth round of this do-the-opposite-zero running back strategy. Round nine. How about another running back? Maybe. Let's take Bilal Powell. Yep. Are we looking like geniuses yet here? Touchdown Or do you think we are on something? Are we on to something or on something? Round 10. I see another wide receiver I'd like to grab here. I like Devin Funchess. We're going to take Devin Funchess. Yikes. You don't like that pick? No, I yeah. don't like that one. Yeah, I'd rather have Kelvin Benjamin. Yeah. Benjamin's going to be a huge bust this year. Calling it. You're, I'm going to make up for it, though, with our round 11 pick. How about we take... Matt Stafford. Theo Riddick. Yeah, I'm okay with that. He catches a ton of passes. Nobody knows what's going to happen in that Detroit backfield this year. I know he's going to catch a lot of passes. He could, he could do so much more than that if just given... The chance. Mm -hmm. So much upside in these running back picks. Round 12, we're taking Richard Matthews. Who else is there to catch the ball in Tennessee? I mentioned some rookie a bit ago. Forget sure. his, I already forgot his name. Sure. We take Richard Matthews, who will probably be the number one in, in that Tennessee passing game after Delaney Walker. Why is my dog making noises? I don't you know can tell, that's coming Tell everybody through. what that noise is, if the microphones are picking yeah, it up or not. If it's not. picking it up, it, it's Ollie, and he's just like eating his foot, I think. I have a Chinese Sharpay who's obviously very hungry. He's taken to eating his own foot at this point, <laughs> and it is making a kind of a gross noise. Yeah, it's, it's, it's odd. So if that's coming through, it's the dog. Yeah. Promise. He wants to be. It's not the two guys in the basement. It's the dog. He's prim and proper when his good friend Brian comes over. <laughs> what did I tell you about this dog? I told you I was going to stop feeding him ribeye last week because you said, you know, I said something about I'd tell you to get lost and you were like, well, your dog likes me. Your dog so. likes me. <laughs> I said, yeah, we're going to have to stop feeding him ribeye. He's awesome. been spoiled. Anyway, what do you think of the zero running back? Uh, I am actually on board with it. Okay. Um, I've been kind of experimenting so here, here's a little side note um hey mock drafts are a great experimentation go out there do it try it if you don't believe us see what you come up with i've been on board for almost a decade i've won a lot of championships let me tell you stick around we're gonna have some argument coming next hopefully overvalued undervalued a game on 515 fantasy football on 1350 espn radio 
This is the 515 Fantasy Football Show. You're hearing it on 1350 AM ESPN Radio in Des Moines or iTunes or Stitcher or the ESPNDesMoines.com website. Lots of places you can find our show, Brian. We're we're all we're everywhere worldwide. So if your excuse is, oh, I just didn't know how to get a hold of you guys, you're a liar. <laughs> you're a liar and a cheat <laughs> and a fool. Um, this segment, we're going to have a, a little game here. So we're going to have some fun, hopefully. And hopefully we'll argue a little bit over these. Guaranteed at this point. The game is overvalued undervalued so i have the adps on several players that are connected somehow and you're you and i are going to determine if one of them is overvalued or undervalued so is this kind of like a detective like fantasy football private eye here no i don't know what you're talking about i was trying to make a game no you will play my game okay (laughs) you want to play a game (laughs) you make your own game this is mine We'll begin with the L.A. Rams backfield. Oh, okay? Lord. Todd Gurley in ADP. There's my dog making noises again. Todd Gurley, second pick of the first round. Okay? Benny Cunningham is his backup. Yep. Virtually undrafted. Is Todd Gurley overvalued at the second pick of the first round? Yes. I think so, too. Way overvalued. Considering the team he plays for. The team. And I'll even throw one in before you even get to say something. Go ahead. I would say his workload is a huge, huge issue. Guys, big dude, runs people over. Some point, you're going to roll an ankle. And if you have Benny Cunningham undrafted with your last pick, you're looking like a champ. Benny has shown some flashes. I think I wrote him off initially. I looked into it. Benny Cunningham, he's got some pass-catching prowess to him, and he's got power. He could be a guy that, even if Todd Gurley gets him right down to the stripe, Benny Cunningham might come in there and frustratingly steal that goal line carry. Yeah, we've seen lots of stuff like that happen. And wasn't Benny Cunningham originally supposed to be the guy until they snagged Gurley? Perhaps. I think so. I think there have been a number of those. Trey Mason. Trey Isaiah Mason. Isaiah P. Really, P. Oh, God. Boy, there have been some some very... Those were fun fantasy names, though. I P. Isaiah <laughs> peed on my shoes. <laughs> wow. Yeah, maybe we'll do a segment That's a segment next, next, week. next week. How next to name week. your team. Team names, yeah. I think... Although I think Matthew Barry, Matthew Barry already kind of stole our thunder there. I think he did something like that just this week, so... All right, on to the uh, Dallas Cowboys backfield. This should be interesting. Ezekiel Elliott, ADP, ninth pick of the first round. Alfred Morris, fifth pick of the 11th round. How much of that carry share or touch share will Ezekiel Elliott have versus Alfred Morris, who undoubtedly has earned a role here. We just don't know what it'll be. I'm going to just safely assume it's going to be a two-third, one-third kind of a gig uh, for a while. But um, in a regular draft, I would say Ezekiel Elliott's overvalued because you never know what you're going to get. Although everybody, we're, everyone's on board with this guy. I know. Isn't that kind know. of scary, though? But you never know. It is right? kind of scary. You never like, everybody. Everyone was on board with Ryan Leaf. <laughs> Do we even know, can Ezekiel Elliott... Can he pass protect? Does he know how to block? And that's the thing. The speed of the NFL. Yeah. So I'm just saying, I'm not saying he's going to be bad forever, but the speed of the NFL and the job requirements of an NFL running back. We just talked about it. Pass catching. Frank Gore. That's the only reason he's still around. That is a huge deal in this game, especially when you got the glass man Tony Romo back there. I'm just, yeah, going to be on record here with you. I think 515 fantasy football. We're, we're, Stepping Making up here. headlines. We are. Uh, I think Ezekiel Elliott is overvalued. I really do. I do, too. And Alfred Morris is criminally under. But I think you should take him in the draft. Yep, I do, too. Eh. Uh, we'll see if that happens. How about the Falcons' backfield? Devontae Freeman, currently the seventh pick of the second round. I think that's undervalued. Considering we saw his ceiling last year. What I don't was think it again? Seventh pick of the second round. Seventh pick of the second round. That's like the 19th overall pick. I think that's undervalued for Devontae Freeman. 
I would say you think I would say players should go well, ahead of him. I'm I'm saying I'm gonna so I'm gonna stick to my gun. Something I've been talking about for a while. I'm gonna say overvalued because a lot of his production came from a very few amount of games. Okay. Tevin Coleman, six pick the ninth round. He's not a guy that I'm typically targeting in drafts as a handcuff. I think I can get better running backs elsewhere. I think Tevin Coleman isn't that great. Yeah, you're on the record for that one. Um, I would lick my chops at a Tevin Coleman handcuff late, though. Yeah, I think too many people are on the Tevin Coleman bandwagon. And I don't get paid by any of them, though, because to me, that's... I go back, just look at the game-by-game stats for Devonta Freeman and tell me it's not a roll of the dice. Granted, he was hitting boxcars all night long, but at the end of the day, when you have games that are like 275 yards and then in week eight, you throw up 60 yards, skews the stats a lot, I don't think so, Brian. I think you're you're not taking into account the guy, the fact that this guy is a, a pass catching stud, and he's got a nose for the end zone, but he also catches a lot of passes. And when you get that guy out into space, look out. This is what I think people are forgetting about Devontae Freeman, especially if you're in a half PPR or a full PPR. Even, geez, he's he's definitely undervalued in a full PPR. Yeah. Okay. So that's uh, something Whatever. to consider. We we'll we'll agree to disagree on the Falcons. Bears wide receivers. How about Alshon Jeffrey being the second pick of the third round? I would say that's way undervalued. It's tough. The guy hasn't been healthy. He hasn't been healthy. I'll give you that. But Bears are probably going to be playing. This is the Calvin Johnson kind of I love of a the deal. guy. I love the guy. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. So this is the Calvin Johnson theory for me. He's going to get a lot of balls thrown his way. He's a big guy. Double teaming, whatever. Just by sheer volume, he's going to throw up the numbers. So undervalued. I, I think Alshon Jeffrey, I think that's undervalued, his current ADP. Kevin White, on the other hand, seventh pick of the eighth round. That's one of my sleepers. But you just you have nothing really to base that on, aside from his collegiate record. Yeah. He, he sat out all of last year. You have nothing to base Ezekiel he's, Elliott on. He's only, his... caught, he's only caught two passes in an, the entire preseason thus far. Secret weapon. Okay. They're keeping it bland. Yep. Okay. You like Kevin White? I think Kevin White's a little overvalued where he's at. I like the guy's name. How about the uh, Broncos wide receivers, considering the uh, sea change that has happened there in Denver, where we don't even know who's going to be the quarterback in week one. Could it be Trevor Simeon? Wasn't he a Northwestern Wildcat? I don't even know. They don't have a great track record. It sounds like. Quarterbacks in the NFL, by the way. Yeah. I don't (laughs) Terrible. Mike Kafka. Probably the only one I can think of. (laughs) Huh? Uh, actually, no. Otto Graham, back in the fifties. That's a real name. Otto Graham. Wow. O T T O. He was a Northwestern Wildcat. Otto Bots. Probably the last great one. Anyway, Demarius Thomas currently being taken the eighth pick of the third round. What do you think of that value? I actually think that's not bad. I'm going to say knee jerk. I think that's kind of on pace, a yeah. little undervalued maybe because he's still a big dude and he's still the number one receiver. And every game he will get at least one screen pass that he will take for 80 yards. And the screen <laughs> pass, man, he is just <laughs> off the hook on those things. It's become a running joke on this show now. Emmanuel Sanders is the 11th pick of the sixth round. Whoa, that's over. Yeah. Way overvalued. Yeah. I as a, as a number two in that offense, and again, you're dealing with quarterback – Huh? Question mark? Yeah, I don't, don't know. The Riddler? All right, one more here. we got time for one more. How about the Green Bay wide receivers? Jordy Nelson, seventh pick of the second round. Randall Cobb, 12th pick of the third round. I would say those are fair numbers. Yeah, I mean, I, I like Jordy where he's going right now. I probably wouldn't pull the trigger on him. I'd probably look at who I've got around him in the, my tier of wide receivers. With Jordy. Jordy being back makes Cobb more valuable to me. I would agree completely on that because when Cobb is expected to be the number one in that offense, we saw what happened last year. Yep. It'll happen again if Jordy gets hurt or somebody else. Cobb is much more effective as a number two. And totally agree. Green Bay, for that matter, is a much more effective offense in general when that happens. So. Overvalued, undervalued. We can probably pick up this, uh, pick this up next week and do it again if you like. 
I like this game. Mm. It's not bad. Not bad at all. One thing you will definitely not like is this week's pop quiz. Boy, did I tick I, I you really ticked me off last week, Brian. You went three for three. Three for three, champ, batting a thousand. For the first time in the history of this show, Brian went three for three. Going to repeat this like a boss. I don't think so. Because boss. I came up with some doozies this week because I, I simply can't have you going three for three. <laughs> okay. I cannot have it. It's not good for radio. Square root of <laughs> 745,342. We hope you'll stick around. Pop quiz is next on 515 Fantasy Football on 1350 ESPN Radio. You have reached that point of the 515 Fantasy Football show that is the most entertaining of all, at least in my opinion. Andy Hall, Brian Eikenberry, along with you for another hour of Fantasy Football Talk on 1350 AM ESPN Radio, on iTunes, on Stitcher. The Pop Quiz, three insanely difficult questions that Brian must answer unscripted, unprepared for, off the top of his genius head which is easy he thinks so then i come back after he gives the answer easy he gives his effort his e for effort and i tell everybody what the correct answer is still looking for our offline players if you agree with me more if you agree with Andy more on these pop quizzes let us know facebook twitter we have yet to have somebody reach out by the way because they know i'm right oh is that the deal yes because you'd think they'd be very vocal about letting me know I was wrong first. No, they don't want to hurt your feelings. That's just not going to happen. Reputations and stuff. Brian went three for three last week. It's not going to happen again this week. We begin with question number one. Will Robert Griffin III end the season with quarterback two numbers or better, Brian? No. (laughs) Dead air. Dead air. <laughs> yeah, uh, I was thinking, trying to think of a question for a second. We, we are on the radio, Brian. Yeah, <laughs> can't just sit there and say Is this nothing. Live? Is this live? Make it up if you have to. <laughs> Where's my dog? Why'd you let him out of here? He could have made some noise. Yeah, I'm saying no. Okay, no. So why? Uh, because I don't believe in RG three. You're saying he's going to end the year, which he's probably not going to end the year. He might end week four, and I think the majority of his stats are still going to come with his legs. So I don't think he's going to get there. The correct answer is yes. What? Provided he he stays healthy, by process of elimination, I can name seven quarterbacks I believe will finish below RG3 by season's end. Well, that wouldn't be an RB2 or a QB2, I'm sorry. Yes, it would. 32 teams in the NFL. Uh Uh-huh. Seven of those will finish below number 24. No. You don't like that? What no. am I supposed to do? I did like reverse process of elimination. So I took Blaine Gabbert, San Francisco, Case Keenum, Los Angeles. I would take Case Keenum over RG3. You're crazy. No way. Who the heck is he throwing to in Los Angeles? <laughs> Who is RG3? RG3. Okay, let me get to that. Okay. Will you let me answer the question no. correctly? <laughs> Blaine Gabbert, Case Keenum. Broncos quarterback du jour, whoever the heck that is, Sam Bradford. Oh, Sam Bradford's going to be a champ. <laughs> you want to fight, don't you? Oh, You're we, just so mad. We need to Skype this. You're like... so mad that I am so right on this. <laughs> Teddy Bridgewater, Jay Cutler, and Brock Osweiler. Seven quarterbacks right there. With a good O-line and pass protection, RG3 should have some fun with his new weapons. He's got Terrell Pryor emerging as a real deep threat. That replaces tra- uh, Travis Benjamin lat- from last year. Josh Gordon, potentially sky-high ceiling once he's off suspension. And our guy, Gary Barnage. It could be a sneaky good year for the Browns offense, provided they don't pull a Browns and screw it all up. I will go on the record right now and bet you whatever you want that Brock Osweiler will have better numbers than RG3. All right. How about how about if you're wrong, you give me Antonio Brown for nothing in the league that I just That would be an illegal trade. No, I mean, I will give you something off my roster. Something okay, so my what choosing. do I get then? What do I get? Who cares? You're wrong. <laughs> oh, man. It doesn't matter. Okay, let's just kick it out to the listeners. If you, if you got an idea for this little no. challenge here. 
Brock Osweiler will beat RG3. Ugh, you're crazy. Absolutely nuts. Okay, so. The Texans aren't going to have to throw the ball that much, which is why I think DeAndre Hopkins, as much as I like the guy, is going to regress a bit because a bit because they're not going to have to throw the ball very much. Great defense. Lamar Miller. Come on. We'll see. I'm just saying. We'll they got see. Alfred Blue Brian. Come on. Yeah. They don't have Blue. To, they don't have to pass. They got your guy Alfred Blue over there. Mm-hmm. Come on now. You're wrong. 0 for 1. No more 3 for 3. That's terrible. Already you've been eliminated. Number 2. Brian's not he, you're already checked out. Look at your face. No. Come on, dude. You're so <laughs> checked out. You're mad as hell right now. I yes, can tell. I am. All right, question two. Which Patriots running back will lead the team in fantasy points by season's end? Will it be LeGarrette Blunt, James White, or will it be someone not currently on roster? No, it's going to be Blunt. I am all in on the Bluntster. He has proven time and time again that they can rely on him, and this will be an opportunity where Belichick is going to rely on him. It's a trust thing. I, I believe in LeGarrette Blunt. Bold prediction that I made on this show last week. I kind of stumbled into it, but it is a bet now that LeGarrette Blunt will reach double-digit touchdowns this season. Yeah, totally. I think part of that, though, is a game flow issue. The Patriots are a, a different team when they're way out in front. Granted, they'll still throw the ball when they want, but typically LeGarrette Blunt gets most of his most of his his play when the Patriots are up, if they're down, whoever the passing down back is generally is in the game. I don't see the Patriots being behind a whole lot, but my answer to number two is actually James White. Oh Lord. From week 11 on last season, White averaged 12.97 fantasy points per week. Lewis before his injury averaged 14.46 over the same amount of game action just earlier in the year. Blunt, as a side, averaged a hair under 10 fantasy points per game. Take White's roughly 13 points per week, added to Blunt's roughly 10. You've got a relatively potent one-two punch. I don't think they really need to go fishing for free agents, if you're the Patriots. Besides building some depth, I can't see any real playmakers coming in and outperforming White for what he's capable of. So my answer here is James White. Again, what a crock. Oh, for two. Oh, not imagine a, that. Not a strong follow-up. Oh, judge, jury, and executioner. Yeah. I kind of like this <laughs> role. Sometime it's going to be, we're going to do like a do the opposite show. Yeah, I'm going to do the pop quiz one of these me, days. And I'll be you. Yes. That, that's a good idea for a show. Maybe. Question three. Come on, save yourself here. Which of these suspended superstars represents the best draft value? Le'Veon Bell in the first, Josh Gordon, early sixth, or Tom Brady, late sixth? I will go with Josh Gordon. Um, Le'Veon Bell, his ADP jumped back up with that reduction by that one game. Tom Brady in the sixth, value purposes, you can have him. I'm going to move on because he's missing four games. So I'll move on from that and uh, leave you with Josh Gordon. Who hasn't played in over a thousand games. Yeah, and you think RG3 is going to be the savior of your team. The answer to number three is Tom Brady, clearly. Oh, oh, yeah, clearly. Doesn't have the injury issues Bell has had, nor the disciplinary issues Gordon has had. Despite Bell's upside, he can be the overall number one fantasy player. That's his ceiling. Gordon's, I'd say his ceiling is probably more like the number one wide receiver, which might not necessarily be the top scoring fantasy player. Brady has the safest floor while also enjoying a potentially high ceiling. P.S. He did finish in most leagues as the number two scoring fantasy quarterback in 2015. If I'm getting him in the sixth, I am a happy camper. Brian, you followed your three for three last week by going... Zero. So says you. For three. A little support, folks. Brian's always begging for this support thing. 
And it's like nobody's coming. No, they to, probably to are. Aid. You control the mailbox on the Facebook. Oh, There's he- probably a thousand love letters in there for me. Welcome to conspiracy theory. Yeah, no kidding. This that's is exactly. Jesse the body. It's that's what it's this true. is becoming now. Conspiracy <laughs> theory with Jesse Ventura. Hey. I'm sure he'll at least show me the emails of my support from I'm, my followers. I want to get Jesse on this show. Wouldn't that be something? Ooh, that'd be neat. Amazing. <laughs> former governor of Minnesota, former Navy SEAL, pro wrestler. And, and now current total host, nutball. Current host of Conspiracy Theory. Yes, let's do it. So Put really, it you ask. really think that I'm squashing any and all support that you're getting on yep, the social there, media? I'm there, I guarantee there's a thousand love letters in there for me. Check in with us on Facebook, 515 Fantasy Football, <laughs> on Twitter, at 515 Fantasy. We each have our own individual accounts as well. Mine is at Andy Hall Radio. His is at Ike FFB, I K E F F B. And we invite you to reach out anytime mm-hmm. because we really like to interact with our listeners. And we have mid argued, mid tweet before. We have. <laughs> we have. That was fun, wasn't it? <laughs> I like when we do that because then the because then whoever it is got way more than they bargained for. Yeah, there right? was there was sometimes it worked out for me, and other times it did not. Oh no! Oh, other times it's pretty bad. <laughs> yeah, what but, I missed. It's like one of those things where like you're swinging for the fences. And you connect, and it just sails. And there's other times you swing so hard you fall flat on your face. I was sw- <laughs> Brian was watching the games like the dog that's trying to understand you, turning its yeah. head huh? slightly. <laughs> Stick around, friends. We're going to talk goal line specialists coming up here. Don't forget our big sleeper segment is on the way as well. Five one five fantasy football on thirteen fifty AM ESPN Radio. You are listening to the 515 Fantasy Football Show on 1350 AM ESPN Radio, also on iTunes and Stitcher, and online at ESPNDesMoines.com. I am Andy Hall. That is Brian Eikenberry. We've made it through the pop quiz relatively unscathed. Brian's got some hurt feelings. Because I was shizered out of it. All right, buddy. No need to drop those S-bombs on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> um... So this is officially draft weekend, isn't it? I mean, yeah. It's, it's like a national holiday. It is national draft day. This is when all the big parties are coming out. And I have always drafted my commission league on national draft day. Week three of the preseason, that's Saturday. One week before college football starts. The week after, you see the all the players in because nobody's playing after week three. Right. So if there's any last-minute injuries, it's going to happen this weekend. So it's a it's a good time to draft. It's good fun. I love it. You and I both have uh, we're both very busy people this coming weekend. This is yep. the wives are both very angry at us, and including last weekend, and they <laughs> made plans to do stuff, and then we were like, "Wait a minute, busy all my fantasy football stuff's going yeah, on." What? Sorry, what do you want me to do? I can't disappoint eleven other dudes next week, dear. Next yeah, week, just maybe flowers, I chocolate. Might. Next week, next. Oh wait, next week. Oh. Yeah, they get a holiday in there. Come on, get off my back. You get a holiday. Labor Day's coming up. Yeah, yeah. so there. And then it's the start you get a of the three-day weekend, and then I'm done. Can you believe we're <laughs> almost there? Wow. Ah, sniffing distance. I don't know about you, Brian, but I think the draft is the greatest thing in the world. It's in terms of uh, fantasy football. It doesn't get any better than getting together. Hopefully in person. If you do an in-person draft, you're really, you've got it going on. Ten times better. So much better. Get everybody on the same page, together in a room, Food. talking trash, yeah, eating trash. <laughs> yes, mean, and drinking trash, and probably. And drinking trash and killing brain cells. Yeah, what's in the canister on the shelf? I don't know. I'll try it. Remember back in the day, like, guys used to have, like, getaway weekends where they'd go off into the woods and, like... Yeah. Sit around campfires and no, stuff. No, thanks. That no. That is such a thing of the past. We're gonna we're gonna sit around, eat a bunch of food, draft, uh, pass gas, lots of fun stuff, and then sit around a pool. Hopefully that it doesn't rain. If it rains, I don't care. It's not gonna stop me. Fat and happy, buddy. Yeah, that's right. So I was thinking about this. I was like, what's what's the bigger deal to me in fantasy football? Is it the draft where I'm actually getting together with dudes and we're doing the whole bit, or is it sitting there, getting comfy in my favorite chair, getting stuffed, doing the basic same thing we're doing at the draft, eating, drinking, whatever, and that kickoff happens? It's week one, and 
officially it's underway. Yeah. So here, here's a, here's what's, another way to think about it. What's better? What's better? So here's here's the way I think about it. The draft is Christmas. You've been you're a kid. You've been waiting twelve months for this day. The draft is when you finally Christmas morning you get to rip into your presents. Amazing. The greatest. It's awesome. Feeling. Everybody's happy. Everyone thinks they got the best toys. And then week one is the next day when you play with your toys. Okay. You That's know, cool. It's so the greatest cool. thing is actually opening. The it, toys. It's the draft it because the draft. You, there's the, all this energy built up and all this camaraderie and everybody's just. It's just so awesome to do this in person with a group of people. Doesn't have to be guys. We have a gal in our league. She's awesome. She talks more smack against other people than most people do. It's awesome. I love it. So we've covered at length running backs in particular that are pass catching specialists. I think we've talked a lot about those, especially in half PPR or full PPR leagues. Those are really valuable commodities. We hit the zero running back strategy earlier. A lot of those guys end up being zero running back type of running backs. Goal line specialists are another type of running back that you should be looking to target later on in your drafts. They might not necessarily even be the quote unquote starting running back. Some of them are. But who are the guys that you're targeting most often that are considered a goal line back, a guy that they put in at the stripe and plow it in there? <laughs> so to me, uh, a good look this year is looking at the Jets roster. Mm-hmm. You know, you've got Forte. He's not that guy. So Never been that guy. Yeah. So you've got these people out there that are like that. Alon um, Powell is your guy. Yeah. So you've got Powell out there. Um but he can also, like, he can catch passes, and he can do all kinds of other things. This is why I love Bilal Powell. I will own Bilal Powell in almost every league I'm in this year. I am that big a believer. Yeah, I, I think it's it's legitimate. You know Forte is not getting the ball inside inside the 5 guaranteed, and maybe not even inside the 10. Yep. That's the reality of the situation. If you're a Jamal Charles owner... Oh, do man. you want Spencer Ware on your team? Yeah, pretty you bad? better. He's you the better. guy, isn't he? At the yes. stripe. Look, Jamal Charles is great. He's got a lot of tread on those tires, or he's got a lot of wear on those tires. So they're going to r- try to reduce that head on collision for him, and they're going to put somebody else in there to take away those six points. How about if you're a DeMarco Murray owner? Do you think Derrick Henry could be that guy? He's built like it, but I don't think so. He is a big dude. He's a big dude, but DeMarco Murray's built for 24-7 play. Running up and down, north and south, no side to side, just hammer it. Something that's going to frustrate Ezekiel Elliott believers, or truthers. Ezekiel Elliott truthers, Brian, is the fact that Alfred Morris has always had a nose for the end zone. I bet he is the guy that plunges in from the one-yard line. I would say that, but for different reasons. I would say that just for an injury prevention for that first year. Well, there aren't many, truth be told, there aren't many running backs that you can count on to be like an almost every down guy and be a goal line guy. Yeah, it's just, it's a it's an injury risk. And it's just, hey, let's bring him out that one yard line because you pile people in there. It's easy to get stepped on, get cut, roll an ankle, Dive over and land on your head. There's lots of injury risk in those real heated trench battles there, and I don't think they're going to put him in that position. One of the best, though, in terms of running backs you can always count on at the stripe when he's healthy and in the lineup is Adrian Peterson. Yeah, he's one of the few rare gems out there that's going to get in there and and take it. For the Colts, when they get up close, do you think that they keep Frank Gore in the game? at the stripe or is there somebody on roster there in Indy maybe a Robert Turbin maybe the rookie Josh Ferguson whom we really haven't seen much of yet are there guys in Indy you would consider at the stripe I would because didn't Frank Gore like never score from inside the five last year feels like it doesn't it I just remember watching him just getting stopped over and over and over trying to get in there and that's because they had no other options If you're a David Johnson owner, do you think either Chris Johnson or Andre Ellington could be that guy at the stripe? Ellington could be. I don't think it's Chris Johnson. It could be, though. He's got to have a role in this offense. He's healthy. 
Look what he did last year before David Johnson took over. Yeah, I well, I had him. So a long season yeah. of Chris Johnson. I uh, I'm surprised both of the Ellington and Johnson are still on that roster. Um, you got to wonder why. Maybe one of them is not going to make the cut here. You're a Lions fan. Sure am. Is Abdullah a guy they put in at the stripe with his fumbling nope. issues? I wouldn't no. think so. So no. maybe Zach Zenner? It, uh, so it, all, early, Ridley? all early indication looks like it's Zach Zenner. Um, Ridley was more of the injury risk, I think, at this point. Sure, but if he's just going in there to be a goal line guy, and you know, let's face it, there was a point at which he scored double digit touchdowns for the Patriots. Sure was. Yeah, sure was. Uh, but eh, beat writers believe it's going to be Zach Center, and they know more than I do. It's been a lot of buzz in Chicago about Jordan Howard being built like a goal line guy. Yeah. But I don't know if I buy it. I think Jeremy Langford, I think a John Fox would be thrilled to have a Jeremy Langford who can do all of that. And even though he's not typically never really has been a bell cow kind of yeah, coach. Yeah, he's never been a bell cow kind of coach, but he's also never had Jeremy Langford. And the flashes we've seen, I think it's it's Langford all the way. Are there any others off the top of your head you can think of? Uh I I, I can only think of one more, and he might be the most important goal line back. Woodhead. Danny Wood. Yeah, I was I'm just going to so say glad. Woodhead. I'm so glad you just said that. He breaks everything we just talked about. We're talking about these big, you know, uh, wrecking balls that are just coming in there. And here's Woodhead, 5'10, like. Not even. He's like 5'6. Is he? Like 5'6. Oh, yeah. He's like 180 pounds. Not even. But he <laughs> is a scrambly little squirrel. And he is back there. And that's what he gets his touchdowns. That's what he does the best. He'll run underneath an offensive tackle's legs. Yeah, he does. It's the fumble ruski play from they're, the little giants. They're man. all up here <laughs> at, at seven foot land fighting it out between the offensive lineman and the defensive yeah, lineman. And, and meanwhile, just, Danny Woodhead just be in between the legs, like underneath, and yep. nobody even sees him. And like, He's oh, like, hammer those touchdowns. Hey guys, hey guys, I'm in the end zone. <laughs> it, it's real. Danny Woodhead is the most important goal line back in all of the NFL. Yeah, I think so. One of the most preposterous statements ever uttered, but it is absolutely look at the, 100% yeah. true. Hey, look at the box score. Yep. Period. It is true. I don't even want to try to name anybody else because I think ending on that note is just fine for that segment. Mic drop, Woodhead, bam. We totally just mic dropped. Um, so you don't want to miss it. Coming up here. In a little bit, we're going to unveil our sleepers. Oh. Brian and I have sleepers at each of the major positions. Guys that we definitely want to make sure you are paying close attention to. I've put, I don't know about you, Brian. I've put a lot of work into who my sleepers are going to be this year. These are guys that I'm not just selling to you. I'm putting this into practice. They're on a lot of my teams uh, because I truly believe these are guys that are going to make a huge difference that you can get much later. Much later. I'm not even talking mid-rounds. I'm talking late-round picks. So those are sleepers. Those are coming up here shortly. Next, though, our good friend Aaron, who's been a, f- a fan of ours and a listener of ours for since the very beginning. He's one of the best in terms of keeping in touch and, and asking questions. And, you know, he, he's come up with some pretty cool segment ideas. We're going to use one of those coming up in the next segment. We're going to talk about fantasy resources between Brian and myself. You are listening to 515 Fantasy Football, and this is 1350 AM ESPN Radio. Just a couple segments remaining, the 515 Fantasy Football Show. Just a couple more preseason episodes remain, Brian. Getting ready to kick off our regular season, and the shows are much different once we get there. Yeah, I will miss it. Um, it's fun just having this playful banter back and forth and slap fights and tickle monsters and all sorts of stuff. Well, consider we have two hours now. This is a little different from last year. We, we had to jam all of that into one hour last year. Do you remember that? Yeah, which you bring up a good point. I mean, now that we've expanded, we've grown. Thank you, uh, listeners and people who interact, because it's it's because of you that we get to do this. So this year's shows are going to have a little bit different feel. They're going to have the same foundation but we're going to get some more reaction time in there instead yeah. of going oh no we've got two minutes to make these next three matchups go yeah and i can't like tell brian how wrong he is about this thing or that thing yeah right? it's gonna now, be awesome and you'll be able to do the same to me muzzle is off yep we're gonna be able to argue <laughs> it out a little bit so we're excited about that uh do not miss the final segment of this show 
Brian and I are going to unveil our sleepers in just a little bit. But first, I wanted to give some props to a longtime listener of this show who came up with what I think is an interesting idea for a segment. Aaron has been listening since day one to our show, and his suggestion was talking about some of the resources that are out there. Who do we go to for information? That's a very good idea for a segment, don't you think? I do. Uh, we do feel this question. Hey, where are you getting? What are you doing? How are you thinking about this? What? Where do you? Where do you get all these stupid and crazy statistics? Yeah, I know it sounds like they. You know, <laughs> it sounds like we're just throwing stuff out there, and and a lot of times there's no one website that has like a concise bit of information that you can. You know, that's already put together. There's nothing that's prefabricated is what I'm trying yeah, to say. Yeah, you can't extrapolate a show from one place. I might have to go to five different resources online, for example, to, to put together one package of information that I then give to you on this show. Sure. It's a lot of work. It's like writing a, a paper. You know, you can't write a paper out of one source. You have to find multiple sources. Um, and do you trust these sources? Are they legit? Are they just running their mouths? You know, there's lots of stuff here we're going to cover. Yeah. I think we'll begin with Roto World. Yeah. Uh, Roto World is kind of my go-to. I visit that site every single day, not only for player news, but also I can look back at any player's history and see, you know, how many games they have played, how many rushing attempts and or catches and or yards and or touchdowns, 100-yard games. I mean, there's stats aplenty through Roto, uh, Roto World, but... Mm -hmm. Uh, mainly I just go there to just keep up on what's going on day to day in the NFL. Sure. Uh, Roto world is a great, that's my injury hub. Um, it didn't used to be, it took a little, uh, time getting used to it, playing footsie with me. I appreciate uh, geez, it. I was like, what is that? <laughs> um, it, it, it takes a little bit of getting used to. It's one of those sites where you can look at it and just move on from it. If you don't like a lot of, you know, stuff coming at you, but I like it for its injury. It's up to date. It's accurate. And, to me, it has the most trustworthy injury uh, because other places are pretty vague because they're not sure yet. Mm -hmm. And it seems like Roto World is uh, right there with the up-to-date, on-point, quick injury news. Before I dive into some of the other websites I like to visit, um, Aaron did ask the question this past weekend if there are any, if there's any value in fantasy magazines anymore. My short answer to that is not really, because you can get all that content online and free, generally speaking, and updated, because that's the other thing about magazines you have to remember is that they're printed generally back in, like, May. Yeah, and I would you, even, yeah. Uh, you know, so, I mean, it's a lot of outdated info, but I will say this. There are a couple that I buy each and every year, if for nothing else, because I like how they lay out, like, player history stats. I like the format. The Fantasy Football Index, for example. Yes, very I, good. I always buy the Index, okay? I don't buy it for their projections because they've they've missed big time on some. <laughs> yeah. Some, putting, putting some guy on the cover, how many years ago was it now? It was a Broncos running back. I don't even remember what the heck is. I think he was Bell, something Bell. Sure, yeah. Do you yeah, even yeah, remember yeah. who this no. guy was? Yep, I do. Yeah, everybody was taking him and he was like the number index, three. Put him on the put him on the cover, and he was just like the biggest bust of all time. Yeah, he was like the number three running back after like week two. It was awful, but I do like the way Fantasy Football Index. If you go to the team pages near the back of the uh, index, it breaks down every game last year. Player stats. Sure. Like quarterback, running back, wide receiver. Here's the, you know, individual guys. And like in bold numbers, here's their touchdowns and how long they were. You know, sure. like so all that stuff is in the fantasy football index. Otherwise, I, I typically will choose a magazine because I like a specific writer and how they approach things. They might make me think consider something that I hadn't normally considered. If I'm coming across something, I go like, oh, this is a new way of approaching this. That's interesting to me. So I might buy that. But generally speaking, to answer Aaron's question, they don't really have a whole lot of value to me. Yeah, uh, I will agree with your one statement. Historical data is nice to have in it print. Is. Right there. Um, just because flipping through web pages and going back and forth, it's easy to get lost, confused. 
Um, so when it's going about historical data, if I'm looking at buying a magazine, it's something that has a ton of stats in it. So I can just kind of flip back and forth and kind of highlight and pick and choose what I need. Yep. That said, I mean, I can go on whatever website that is housing my fantasy league. Yeah. It might be my fantasy league. Um, and you can go online and see historical data in terms of fantasy numbers through those sorts of websites. Um, I, I don't know if like an ESPN or a Yahoo, some of the more popular free sites do that. I think you have to go to like my fantasy Uh, the MFL website's fantastic for that. They keep historical data. Uh, let's see. RT sports is another one. I really like a lot cause they keep historical data as well. Uh, and that's another, that's another pay to use website. You can house your fantasy league there, and it's all customizable. Um, for your standard leagues, I think RT Sports is great. I think my fantasy league, there's nobody better if you're doing like auction, that sort of thing, where you have to set up contracts and length of and money values. And yeah, I definitely think salary every, cap. Yeah, I think every website has its own. There's no one go to um, for everything encompassing in websites, at least that I've found. I am originally still a Yahoo guy mm -hmm. just because of the historical data they keep, but they also have fun things that kind of pop in and out. And When you say historical data, though, you mean for your specific league. For my league, specific league. Your trophies and stuff that you can win. Right. You You're know, not it, talking about like player stats and stuff, are nope, you? Nope. Okay. I'm just I talking. they have that. No, yeah. not really. Um, I'm, I like to be a little bit entertained, and you'll find this. So with like my fantasy league, there is zero entertainment value to the website. It works great. It's awesome. It's not pretty. There's not a lot of paint on the walls. Somewhere like Yahoo for the league, there's lots of stuff. There's the cotton candy machines, and there's all this stuff happening, but uh, it kind of lacks in, in all the other stuff. So, uh, If you're looking for a place to house your league's win uh, winnings, like you know entry fees and stuff, so that a guy doesn't physically have to keep all that money in an envelope all season long, and then be responsible to mailing out all of the winnings after the season's over, or getting in touch with guys that aren't paying, that sort of thing. I'm not getting paid to mention them, but League Safe is a website you should look into. It's actually run by Paul Charchian, who I mentioned earlier oh. in the show, <laughs> a guy that I think is he's mad brilliant. The guy. Um, he runs this league safe site, which basically you submit your entry fee into it and it holds it like a bank for you Oh, that's and cool. and then distributes it after the season is over. It's kind of nice. Uh, you can feel free to check into that if you like for your league or not. You can continue doing it the way you've been doing it. I have been doing it in an envelope for my commission league forever. Oh man. I'm actually the treasurer in one of my leagues. <laughs> I like being in charge of the money. I'm a data guy, so I, I, hear ya. I have spreadsheets and all sorts of cool stuff. Real quick, Aaron, we're running out of time here, so I just want to make sure and mention a couple of other websites I like to check out personally. Um, I like to go to fantasysharks.com because there's a lot of interesting writers there, and they write some very interesting columns throughout the course of the year. I don't, Again, I don't necessarily, and this is a common theme, I don't necessarily go to these sites for like projections and stuff, because I do all of my own work, and I think it's important for you to do the same thing. You can use my guidelines, if you like, or our guidelines week to week on the show. We appreciate that. But yes, there are other options to consider out there if you want. Um, I will always point you toward ESPNDesMoines.com in terms of this show. We hope you'll make that a place that you bookmark and check out every single Probably week. Probably your best resource you're ever going to find. There you have it. Uh, we do give you plenty of content on the show here, but we'll have some cool blog stuff uh, that you can only get on the ESPNDesMoines.com website as the season begins. So that to look forward to. Hopefully that answered Aaron's question. Yeah, uh, just real quick. There is that, that little note about... Um, at some point, you will come into a data roadblock, and there's nothing you can account for, experience, knowledge, and just an overall gut feeling and draft strategy. Stick around. Brian and I are going to give you our sleepers. You've been waiting around. We appreciate it, and we'll give them to you next. 515 Fantasy Football on 1350 AM ESPN Radio. Final segment of this episode of the 515 Fantasy Football Show on 1350 AM ESPN Radio on iTunes and Stitcher as well. I'm Andy Hall. That's Brian Eikenberry. And we thank you for sticking around with us and invite you to come back again 
next week. We'll have a lot to talk about. We will have a lot to talk about. We're going to draft review, and what are you excited about? Did you get some sweet lands in there? We're going to have to did learn you, some things from week three of preseason action. Did you wake up your sleepers? Did you land the ones you wanted to? Brian and I both have a list, uh, and I am going to begin at the quarterback position. Who could be this year's Cam Newton? I don't know if anybody can really be Cam Newton, but besides Cam Newton, and will he even be Cam Newton this year? That's another question for another time. Uh, here are some sleepers that you can get super late at the quarterback position. This is my perspective, and then I'll toss it to Brian. Tyrod Taylor's my first. His current ADP is 122. That's the early 10th round. And he's the odds-on favorite to lead the quarterback position in rushing yards, put up mid-tier quarterback two numbers in 2015, eight yards per attempt, six interceptions on the season. He was seventh in fantasy points per game last year. Tyrod Taylor. Yeah, he was one I was going to say, so glad you stole my homework. Ryan Fitzpatrick is another current ADP of 166. That's a late 13th round. Anyone remember what the bearded one did last year besides me? He finished the season as number 12 quarterback, didn't miss a game, gets all his weapons back at wide receiver, adds a viable tight end, and arguably has a better running back tandem than he did in 2015. How anyone thinks he's due for a sizable regression, having said all that, is beyond me, Brian. Yeah, I don't think so. He just got stronger. And signed a deal. And signed a deal. <laughs> there you have it. Finally. Uh, my number three is Robert Griffin III. This should not surprise Brian. His uh, current ADP 174, the early 14th round. We're told to take preseason performances with a grain of salt, granted, but after two games as Cleveland's starting quarterback, Griffin has, at the very least, passed the eyeball test, at least in my opinion, having completed 10 of 16 passes for 163 yards and two touchdowns through the air, while also contributing some yards with his legs. His weapons have the potential to make a Browns team that people you know, actually will want to watch in 2016. With Terrell Pryor emerging as a deep threat, the potential of Josh Gordon once his suspension is over, a decent backfield, and then Mr. Reliable himself, Gary Barnage. Don't say, I didn't tell you this may be coming, but Robert Griffin III is a guy you can get super late and might put up quarterback two numbers if I have anything to say about it. Okay, so my number three sleeper here. Can we agree to the first two? Great. My number three is someone who won't even be drafted, guaranteed. Cool. Who's that? Joe freaking Flacco. Oh, he'll be drafted. Joe Flacco is – I'm I'm seriously loving it. You got Mike Wallace. You got Steve Smith. You got Bashard Perriman. Terrible running game. I'm liking my Joe Flacco. I have a, I've already done the homework on this, Brian, just so you know. If you are a Tom Brady owner, there is no better quarterback in the NFL for the first four weeks of the season while you are Brady-less than Joe Flacco. Yep. And you can get him with your last pick, generally speaking. Guaranteed. If you're a Brady owner, if you draft Brady, you should also draft Joe Flacco and not have to worry about the quarterback position at all for the rest of the season. Agreed. Now, who could be this year's Devontae Freeman? This is actually a viable question because I think there are at least a few candidates out there. My top candidate is Charles Sims, current ADP of 102. That's the early ninth round. He ranked seventh in targets and receptions in 2015, only scored four touchdowns, but still finished in the top 20 at his position in half PPR leagues. He averaged seven rushes per game, nearly five yards per carry. I tell you something, if Charles Sims, he's in a very similar position. If somebody ahead of him, if something happens to Doug Martin and Charles Sims is the guy, he could be the next Devontae Freeman. Absolutely. Uh, I view Sims as the better running back right now just because, for whatever reason, they didn't put him out there when they needed him to. And I think he's, he's better than the muscle hamster. Bilal Powell is my second current ADP of 108. Late, uh, that's late ninth round. From week 11 on last season, Powell put up top five running back numbers. He should continue getting the majority of the receptions out of the backfield, likely the goal line work as well in New York, as we discussed earlier. Forte to contend with, yes, but he's aging and, more importantly, isn't making that much more money than Powell in terms of the contract, and I think that's a pretty big tell. And you have got to be concerned a little bit about Forte's injury history. Not that there ever was, but he has history now, and he's one year older. My third is DeAndre Washington, Raiders, 
Current ADP 125, that's the early 11th round. He's all but guaranteed passing down work behind Raiders starter Latavius Murray, who, by the way, he's no guarantee to stay healthy, especially given the volume that the Raiders want to give to him this year. If given the chance, Washington could be the next Freeman. Running behind the league's second-best run-blocking O-line, according to Pro Football Focus, the tools to be an every-down guy if and when he's called upon. And I'm talking about a rookie here. I was going to go with Alfred Morris as my number it's good, three. It's a good one. Just because we we talked about it for a little bit. Can Ezekiel Elliott keep up with the speed and pace of the NFL? If he's bad at run blocking, he's not going to be in there. No, I agree. I think Alfred Morris, you know, I've kind of I, I felt like writing him off at first, but I, I've come around on this because you I I don't I just don't know that I can buy a rookie running back coming into the league and shouldering as much as Dallas says they're going to, to put on his shoulders. I can buy it. However, once I buy it, I'm going to need the insurance bet. <laughs> Very good point. Uh, who could be this year's breakout wide receiver core? Uh, I think there's a number of these, but I, I, you know, I think I just threw a few darts here, and I'm hoping for the best. But Travis Benjamin is one of them. Current ADP of 110. That's the late ninth round. There weren't many wide receivers that got off to a hot start in 2015 as Benjamin did. He didn't finish as strongly, but that could be easily blamed on Cleveland's disaster of a quarterback position late. Uh, now 2015's wide receiver number 28 heads to San Diego where he'll catch passes from a competent quarterback in Phillip Rivers, but he won't be relied on to be a number one. Keenan Allen happens to be that guy already. This role should benefit Benjamin and his deep threat skill set greatly, if you ask me. Yeah, I'm on board with this. Um, I think he's a guy, and it really, to me it really comes down to the quarterback situation. And Phillip, Phillip Rivers is competent, even though he sidearms the ball and looks weird. He's still competent and get the person the ball. That's you mean really he what looks weird as in in the face or the sidearm is as, weird? As the sidearm, oh, it drives okay. me nuts. Okay. Maybe thought, he'll have the Texas tie on. If he has the Texas tie, you better be going for them San Diego wide receivers. That's pretty funny. <laughs> Richard Matthews, Tennessee, is another of my sleeper wide receivers. Current ADP of 149. That's the late 12th round. The buzz in Tennessee was Doriel Green Beckham, as you know, until he was shockingly dealt to Philly for a used ball bag. Uh, now yeah, many, was. yeah. Now many are left to wonder who could benefit from all those displaced Marcus Mariota attempts. My money is on veteran journeyman Richard Matthews here. He finished 50th at the wide receiver position in 2015, but part of that low ranking was the fact that he missed the final five games of the season. From weeks one to 11, though, Matthews averaged over 10 fantasy points per game and wasn't even the top targeted guy in Miami. That would be Jarvis Landry. With new opportunity and less than stellar competition at the position in Titans territory, I expect Matthews to be a late round steal. I'm going to deviate and go with Anquan Bolden here. Uh, I think Bolden has that. He's going to be in the middle. He's going to be that sleeper. I think he's that guy right there. I'm going to go yeah, ahead and just disagree it's with you. On full that. homer there, but dude, there's totally so, there aren't that many passes to go around. Oh my oh, god, you've got Marvin Jones be. and Golden Tate. I am totally Eric Ebron. I am uh, Neil no, Riddick. Ebron's not going to make it in okay. the season. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. All right, buddy. You really think Anquan Bolden? I think he's there to teach the youngsters a little something. something. Nope. That's what I think. Plus, he's a guy that's he's pretty tough. Like you know, he's not gonna he's not gonna leave a game hurt. Even if he breaks his face, he's still in there. Mm -hmm. My third and final wide receiver sleeper is Bruce Ellington. Current ADP 180. That's the early 14th round. Ooh. Chip Kelly offense, bad team that should be trailing in most games and throwing the ball a ton. Torrey Smith has been virtually invisible this preseason thus far. Anquan Bolden hit the free agency market. Ellington can line up out wide in the slot, even in the backfield. He may be used in all three spots all season long. We just don't know. You could do a lot worse than a flyer like Ellington in the 14th round. Yeah, I would be very happy to take that in the 14th round, so I'll go with that. Who could be this year's Gary Barnage? I'm not going to give you the full rundowns because we're running out of time, unfortunately, but I will say Vance McDonald of those same Niners. I think Vance McDonald is a guy you can get in the mid-14th round right now. Huge steal, if you ask me, because I think what he can do if he's healthy is amazing. Benjamin Watson. Yep. What happened to Benjamin Watson? He's not even being drafted in a lot of leagues. He, I'd he's, take it all day long. He's in Baltimore now, where the tight end position yep. has been relevant since the Todd Heap days, for Cripe's sake. A.K.A. Joe Flacco sleeper. By the way, Benjamin Watson was uh, 2015's number 7 scoring tight end in half PPR leagues. People are writing him off. I don't know why. Completely agree there. You took my sleeper. Oh, I did? Yes. Sorry, Brian. 
I had him paired up with Flacco. It's awesome. Wah, wah. All right. That has been another episode of 515 Fantasy Football. Again, we invite you to check us out online anytime at ESPNDesMoines.com. On our Facebook page, 515 Fantasy Football. On Twitter, at 515 Fantasy. I'm Andy Hall at Andy Hall Radio. That's Brian Eikenberry at IkeFFB at IKEFFB. Quickly, Brian, anything to leave our listeners with? Prepare your draft strategy and prepare. Have a backup plan. We are available during your draft. Hit us up on Twitter. Yes. We'll answer. Oh, my gosh. Let's do it. This is 515 Fantasy Football, and we thank you for listening.